Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to try some 3D printing with the cheapest filament that I can find. So let's see how it does. So I've been getting a couple of messages asking for a bit more 3D printer content and I thought with it coming up to Christmas and everyone being a bit skint around this time of the year I'd have a go at looking for the cheapest filament that I could find and see if we can actually do anything that even closely resembles some decent 3D printing from it. So I headed on over to Amazon and started having a look. And first off, one of my assumptions was straight off wrong. I assumed that the cheapest filament that I could find would be something from either eSun or Sunlu or something like that. And they were both actually around the £18 mark, with them being a little bit cheaper if it was in the sale. And similar with the Amazon Basics, I've never used the Amazon Basics filament, but I've heard that it's pretty trash. And having used the eSun and Sunling filaments before, they're fine, but I'd generally rather pay the little bit extra for what I think is a slightly better quality of filament. But I then stumbled across this from a company called Deeply, and their filament is really, really cheap. And when I actually bought this, it was Black Friday, and I got this for under £10 for a kilo roll, which is mad. Now a few of the other colours are a little bit more expensive, but the grey is only like £12.99. And if you go into buying multiples of colours like the black or the white, then it works out £10 a roll after the first. Which hopefully is going to turn out to be really good value. So let's get the boring bit of some unboxing out of the way really quick, and then we'll move on to some printing. So all the filament comes in the pretty much standard cardboard box. Inside the box we get our vacuum sealed bag, just to keep all the moisture out, and once we open that, we've got a cardboard roll and some standard desiccates so we don't get any moisture inside. The roll's all fairly standard. We get the really nice little bits on the side so you can guesstimate how much of your roll's got left. It's simple, but I like it. A nice tightly wound roll with no crossover or anything that's going to cause printing problems. Nothing to write home about, but nothing that's going to cause any concerns in how this is being packaged. So I thought I'd start with one of my favourite things to 3D print, and you always need more scenery. So this is from War Scenery, and it's an Infantry Command Bunker. I've printed this before, so it gave me a nice baseline. And it also comes with this top section. I'll come back to printing that in a second. And you can see this came out really well. We've got all the detailing that you'd expect of this, though there are a few layer lines. They might be slightly more prominent than they are with my Creality Hyperfilament, but that's more than double the price. So I think that's probably a fair exchange for something that I'm going to have to sand if I want it perfectly smooth regardless. I also spotted what was quite an interesting result here. Now this is the flat surface that's parallel to the build plate. And that's normally a problem area for 3D printing with filament. And you normally solve that by ironing. And I did iron this, but you don't normally get results as good as this. You generally get these remnants, which you can see on the example on the right hand side where this has been ironed, but it doesn't look as perfect as this does, and that's even on a bigger scale. This filament irons really, really well, like surprisingly well, and it's an interesting characteristic for filament to have, because sometimes you have projects which have a lot of surfaces that are parallel to the build plate. For example, on this project, the roof is going to be almost entirely parallel to that surface. Or in other projects, you're going to have your flooring that's going to be parallel to it. So this is really desirable. Now, actually, I am getting a little bit ahead of myself, because there is an issue with the deeply filament that you need to at least be aware of, and that is adhesion. Try as I might, and with multiple different files, I found adhesion an absolute pain with this filament. I just couldn't get it to consistently work. And I know what I'm doing with filament before someone says in the comments, and I tried everything that I knew. I tried a range of different temperatures for the print bed, I tried having a slow of print, or having thicker layers on the bottom, and anything that I found to work with other filaments just wouldn't necessarily work with this, at least not consistently. Now this might have something to do with the PEI bed that Creality uses, so I have no idea whether you're going to have the same problem with the glass bed or not. It is something that some other people mentioned in some of the comment sections for the Deeply filament. And in the end I resorted to buying some of this 3D printing glue. And I have to say it solved the problem, no worries at all. And considering how much you get for the price, I don't think it's a really big sacrifice if you want to be consistently saving money on your filament. And it is going to save a lot of money buying this over certain other brands. But I think it's important to report this sort of stuff to you as this is actually the only real drawback that I've actually found of this filament. Everything else seems to be absolutely awesome, especially considering, as I said, it is just so damn cheap. 
With that issue sorted, we got fully into 3D printing. I carried on with some war scenery stuff. This is from their new Kickstarter, which is very Star Wars themed, but I'll be using it mostly for scenery. So I printed out this tank, which goes together really nicely. It doesn't need any supports at all. It prints all flat on the print bed, which is great. And it was while printing this tank, specifically the railings, which I'm gluing on now. And as I said, these are designed to be printed so that they don't need any supports. So all of the railing legs are facing upwards away from the build plate. That I realised the other really big positive of this filament. Now, I hadn't tried to dial this in other than trying to get it to actually adhere to the print bed much at all. I just stuck with my normal settings. And there's almost no stringing with this filament. And I think I could probably, with some tweaking, get it to the point where there's none. But having so little straight away is really, really helpful. So I thought I'd actually make something to test this out. And I designed this set of crystals that are three separate parts and set that printing to check this out. And as you can see, there is just no stringing that's going on in this printing process. Now, I don't know why that is. I'm guessing there's something about the composition of this PLA that gives it a bit more snap, for want of a better word. And that almost slight snap means that you get this really clean breakaway when you've got your hot end moving from one bit of the print to the other. I'm also wondering if it's something to do with that. Maybe it's a temperature basis thing that is the same thing that allows you to get that really, really good ironing effect so easily with this deeply filament. So I thought I'd end with some photos of the things that I 3D printed. There's nothing fancy here, sorry guys, but I thought it's best doing these results as photos because you get the clearest view of them. And in the end, you're going to want to make your mind up on if you're interested in this filament yourself. Now, my thoughts on this is that I just think for the price, this is great. It's got some minor issues with adhesion, but in many instances, those positives, especially of that ironing really cleanly on the top surfaces, are really going to outweigh that, especially for certain projects like bases. And it's for that exact reason that I can't say, yeah, you should go out and buy it, but I can say safely that I've already gone out and bought more because I've got some wargaming bases that I'm designing coming up. And this is going to be a very cheap, but also reliable way of getting some really good results on those top surfaces. So to answer the initial question in the thumbnail, can you get cheap filament that does a good job? Well, make up your own mind, but I'd say yes. To give you an idea of that, having weighed this tank, and you can see the size of it in this shot, it's easily larger than something like a Land Raider in Warhammer 40,000. This tank cost under four pounds of filament to print. You're just not gonna beat that in terms of price, or at least I haven't found anything that can beat that in terms of price. Now, I'm not being sponsored for this video or anything like that. The only thing I've got going for this is that I've got some affiliate links in the description. So if you are interested in purchasing anything like this deeply filament and giving it a go yourself, then it'd be really appreciated if you did use those links. And please come back to the video and report what you've found. I'm one person reviewing just three different colours on one printer. So I'm sure everyone would be really interested to hear on other people and the results they've got as well. Now, I did quite enjoy this process. Filament is not something I've really reviewed before, so I thought I'd go out and hunt for some resin as well and give that a look. So if you're interested in seeing that, hit subscribe and that bell icon so you know when those videos are coming out. And I hope to see you in some videos in the future. Have a great day, guys.